Here's the uh, Uniden Pro 510XL. Purchased this at a Hamfest last weekend. Says no audio, audio chip speaker. So it could be one of the two. Missing a knob, pretty dirty. But we're going to dig into this radio and see what's up with it. I'm going to get started on that thing right now. Okay. So, let's hook some power up to this bad boy. Let's see what this bugger does. All right. Let's see here. 12 volt here at 12.1 uh, volts, negative, you're positive. All right, moment of truth. Oh, oh. <laughs> look at there. Ah, I forgot that you came unplugged. Look at that. Okay, well, it comes on and just went off. Okay, that's interesting. I bet you it might have blew the fuse. Possible because the audio chip is shorting out. I would imagine so. So let's check this fuse. Oh yeah, it burned that fuse. Absolutely. Let's see. It is not the right fuse, obviously. Trying to get a good focus here on that, but yeah, obviously that fuse is blown. Let's take a look. Well, it's a one amp fuse, but it's one of those slow blow fuses, which is not good to use, because that could blow the radio. But it was a one amp fuse. Okay, well, we're going to dig into this radio and see what uh, issues we have. Okay, for a quick reference, what I'm going to do, hook it up direct. I want to see how many amps it's actually drawing that it blew that fuse. So, there's my meter. We're going to turn this switch on very quickly. I'm not going to run this long. Ooh, okay. Now, that might not be the proper way of doing it, but you know what? I just wanted to see. Almost two amps. So, that ain't right. So, what I'm going to do, we're going to pull this cover off and see what's going on on the inside. Okay. I'm going to sit these screws off here. I must just do all these screws. Oh, I hate that when it sticks to the thing like that. You're going to have to excuse my voice today. I got a cold. It was like 80 degrees, 80 degrees two days ago. And now it is 32 and it is actually snowing outside. Thanks to Ohio weather. One day it could be 80. Next thing you know, you got a snowstorm. Okay, now. I still got this hooked up. What a dumbass. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, let's open this cover off here. Well, the radio looks nice inside. Looks clean. Visually expecting. I do see a bit of corrosion here. But now we're going to pull off the bottom side. It's a little rusty there. Well, I see some rust here, which means it, it heated up, and that part got rusty from moisture. That's my guess. I don't see no burnt traces. Visually expecting, don't look too bad, but 
as you can see here, it's definitely rusted out where the heater, the uh, audio chip is. That's your audio chip. So, I do believe there's a voltage regulator there too. So, let's do this. Turn on the soldering gun. Let's get this cover off. I'm going to desolder these wires off the speaker. Make it a little bit easier to mess around with. We'll go from there. Now, what I like to do, because there is a positive and a negative for the speaker. Do a little zoom here for you. That says negative right here in the speaker. Then you can see there's a positive. So I take a black marker, just mark it that wire. Yeah, if you want, you can even mark it on the speaker. Take yourself a red pen, mark that wire, red, and red on that side of the speaker. But if you do lose your place, let's get this disconnected first. Oh, there you go. Okay. Now, let's say you did take this all apart. Pay attention where your wire goes in. The one wire is to the back, and the other one's towards your speaker jack. Well, the one wire coming in is right here. Get in frame. Right here. Now, you see all this green? Your green lawn everywhere? The wider spaces, the empty spaces? More likely, that's going to be your ground. Because that's your ground side. Grounds here, here, throughout the board. The wider spaces are ground. So that one's going to be your ground. Your other wire coming in is right here. You can see for here, as I marked it as positive. This one here is your positive. It's isolated between here. Small space. So that's going to be your positive side of the speaker. To the speaker jack in the back. In case you lose your spot if you want to do it that way as well okay let's get this uh plate off here yes i like using power tools even though they're big and bulky it works for me all right we got that sucker off all right, that is one awful big heat sink. Sorry, it's hard to talk because my nose is really stuffed up. All right, let's take a peek here with my little jewel glasses on. And I see a lot of corrosion here. Let's get a little light on the subject. So maybe you can see as well. Get a pointer. Now there is a bunch of corrosion here. Obviously, that's from the screw. So this radio is probably in a damp atmosphere. But looking visually at the looks like a regulator in the audio chip, I don't see any actual burnt spots on the chip or the audio chip so oh wait a minute yeah that's just dark okay all righty well i think what i'm going to do here you can use solder ribbon this will suck the solder right off in fact we might just go ahead and use this here let me do a little trimming let me trim that mugger, give it a haircut, get my uh, some soldering paste. You can pretty much get this probably any hardware store, but this is clean flux. That's what I like to use. Actually, this is left over from my grandfather, and I've still got it. I've had it all these years. He was a very good person he taught me everything 
taught me everything how to fix cars, mowers, electronics, you name it. He was a good man. So this is what I do. Let me do a little zoom in on this for you, if I can. All right, now we got our desolder wire here. We'll go through and desolder each one of these legs. They're really small. They make these things smaller and smaller. Tell you what, if I had to do this to a cell phone, guess where it would go? Yeah, right into the garbage. Of course, there's probably people out there that actually have equipment that can do the really, really small stuff. But I'm just doing the old antique CB radio stuff. Just for the fun of it. If it works, it works. If it don't, it don't. It's just a pass the wintertime pass away. Get rid of all the the wintertime blues. Since spring was here. Alright. Well, they did a nice job. I really cleaned that off pretty good. I'm pleased with that. Yeah, you kind of like the no, it's not gonna be totally loose. So what you're gonna wanna do. It's just kind of break free each one like that. It broke free. Some might be a little sticky yet. Those are clear. That one's not. I have to do that one one more time. That one's clear. All right. So let's do that. Let's go over one more time. I'm going to start off with a clean slate. Clip this here. A little soldering paste. Let's do the ones that were sticky. Okay, that one's clear. That one's clear. Doesn't hurt to go over a second time. Makes it easier for in and out. No roadblocks. Okay. All right, let's see how that works. This side, get you in view here. All right, let's see here. There we go. All right. Sorry if I got it on Zoom here, but... Uh, I don't see any visually burnt spots on it. Usually that happens. Okay, this here is the audio chip. That's the number on the audio chip. If you want to look for that audio chip, you can probably go on Fleabay and find it. Or Amazon. This number is LA4446. 1R6. That's the number on the audio chip. Probably want to look at yours and make sure you find that number. This doesn't look too bad, but it doesn't work. That'd be the chip. Now, what you want to get yourself is some heat grease or thermal grease, which is called thermal grease. A little tube I bought here. Uh, I think I got this on Flea Bay. Can't get it to zoom. Let's move this thing out of the way. There we go. That's where I bought that from. But it's just uh, thermal grease. You can actually go to the auto parts store and ask them for thermal grease. They sell it for uh, the high ignition switches and stuff like that. But uh, you're definitely going to want to put that on the back of your chip before you install it. So you're going to want to squirt a bunch here under this here surface before you install it. Now I don't want to get my fingers all greasy yet. And when you put it in, 
Make sure you do the inside of this as well. I already have the heat sink out, but you want to put some on the inside of this. Get it on there as much as you can. The more you had, the better off it is. It'll keep it nice and cool. All right, let's get installing this chip. You got gigantic hands like me, you're like, holy buckets. It's like doing an operation on a, a bumblebee. All right. Okay, we got the chip setting in. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on this. If you want, I'm going to solder this. If you want to fast forward a bit, that's fine. We're just going to go ahead and re-solder this uh, chip back on the board. And we'll start here. I'll we'll start at this end. So you want to do it either end. Like if you are starting this in, me, I personally, I like to solder this end and then that end. It keeps it the even because if you start soldering this way, it could lean to one side not do it evenly. This way it holds it on both ends. But, you know, you don't have to crisscross like you do lug nuts on a car. And another key thing is you do not want to stay on it too long. Heat is not good for electronics. You could burn that chip out. In fact, should give it a second or two to let it cool off before you continue. Maybe a good idea. Well, you're not frying the chip that you just put in. All right, we have all that soldered. I don't see it crossing anywhere. Make sure it didn't bleed over. Now. Before I go ahead and put all this back together here, I'm gonna give it a quick test and see if uh, the amps are still real high. So let me uh, pause this and we'll see. Okay, so I got it on. What I'll do, shut that back off, attach my wire. I have a bypass the fuse here. So if it looks like it's red's touching here, because it is, but it's not connected. All right. Right now the meter says 12 volts. Let's turn it on. Well, that's a good sign. It's 0 0.2223. 0 0.23, I would say. That's good. All right. Let's real quick. Put that back on and let's see if we get some audio. Yeah. Now we're ready to put this back on. This cover here. We got a hair going on there. It's getting hairy. So all right. All right, we got that bugger on. Thermal grease. Let's get the screw back in the hole. Get that at this point. I'll just go ahead and use a screwdriver because I don't want to over tighten that. Crack the new chip. All right. It's all looking good. Still got a little rust there, but that ain't going to hurt nothing. off on here all right let's uh hook power back up i'm gonna use a external microphone which i already have it plugged in we'll plug this into the back of the radio get my coax put the coax under the radio 
Now, you're going to need a microphone for sure. Found this microphone in my stash. It just needs a little bit of cleaning up. But it should work. All right, guys. Moment of truth. Let's see if this... Switch my antenna here. I put a snob on here from the parts radio. Well, let's turn it on and see if we got sound. Oh, I hear it. I hear static. I don't got electric seeds. All right, the Apple Shack. Hey, uh, Apple Shack. A little too much. Radio. Yep, we got audio out, and also we have audio receive. Sounding pretty good. Oh, let's double check. You better what? You better put the uh, bumper up. I appreciate that, Apple Shack. 30 dBs. That's a lot of dBs. Okay. All right, that sounds pretty good. Well, now that actually works. Let's put this radio back together, and I'll be back in a second. Well, holy buckets, she's definitely working. Yeah, buddy, channel 28, a lot of skip coming in lately. Yeah, buddy. Audio, yeah, look at that meter move. We almost got 100% modulation. Well, this is the whole problem. Little audio chip. My name's Trevor. Well, hi, Trevor. How you doing? <laughs> so anyway, audio chip, jump. Anyway, thanks for watching Buckets of Garage. Can't talk. Thanks for watching Buckets of Garage. I really appreciate it. Please like and subscribe. We'll try to make more of these videos, maybe some more repairs, more cycles, whatever. So anyway, thanks again. Have yourself a great day and a wonderful rest of the week.